Okay, welcome to all of you who are in the uh, Summer 2020 Sections E01 and E02, Sections of Art Appreciation. So those of you who are taking Art Appreciation from MEW this summer, welcome. So uh, this, this lecture is just a basic introduction to the course. I'm going to talk mostly an introduction to uh, the course content and how the course content is struggled in the course and maybe answer a few questions along the way. Um, but this isn't a thorough going through every part of the syllabus and um, it doesn't cover everything about the course. There will be some more lectures following this that will go through how to use Canvas, um, how I organize Canvas particularly um, differently from other people, um, another video on finding the videos, where the videos are, and using the videos, and another video on the overall calendar of the course. But this one is really just kind of about the big topic of what is appreciating art, and yeah, how does the course teach art appreciation? But you probably have some other questions, such as, who am I? So my name is Alex Stelios Wills, um, and you don't have to write that out or say that out. Um, you can just call me Mr. SW um, or Professor SW or whatever you want. That's fine. You can even, in an email, you can call me Alex if you like, although most students prefer not to be so informal. So what are we going to learn? Well, that's one of the main things we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about different ways that art appreciation courses are organized and then the and structured and the types of content that you might find in art appreciation courses and then specifically the kind of art content that is in my art appreciation course. Um, you may also be wondering if you are looking at the syllabus why there has to be so much. Well there are a lot of a lot of different um, things that need to be covered, a lot of different tukuses that need to be covered and a syllabus uh, just needs to make sure it's kind of like um, it just needs to make sure that every possibility is at least covered somewhat. Um, so back to the question. How does a class teach you to appreciate art? And so I have a I have a story that kind of relates to that. So let me tell you the story. So this work that we're looking at right here, um, this is Burning Rods by Anselm Kiefer. And it's a paint he's a German artist um, and produced in 1987. He was producing a lot of work in the 70s. 80s and 90s. This piece, this particular piece is owned by the St. Louis Art Museum and is still owned by the St. Louis Art Museum. And I went to college in St. Louis at, at Washington University in St. Louis and the university is right by uh, Forest Park and which is right where the art museum is. So the art museum was um, an easy walking distance from campus and I used to go to the art museum every weekend to look at art and I would look at as much as I could every time I visited the museum, trying to take in as much as I could, but I would always stop right at the end um, and just kind of rest a little bit in front of this painting. Uh, this painting is huge. Uh, it's about, I think, like eight or nine feet tall, and I think about 11 or 12 feet wide. Um, it's wall size, and it's got um, lots of stuff on it. Back then, it still had a skate on it. it, has sand poured on it, it has molten lead poured on it, it has straw kind of embedded in the paint and all kinds of other stuff. And I was always hoping to be there at one point when one of those things might have fallen off. Like I said, there was a skate, like a, you know, an ice skating skate um, attached to the painting, and uh, it did eventually fall off, but not while I was watching the painting. So I always hoped that I would be there to see some of that stuff, but I also just like to sit in front of this painting and just stare at it and look at it because I found that the more I looked at it, the more I found in it. It was just, it's a constantly revealing painting. And I feel that's true about Anselm Kiefer's work in general, like that at first you don't see kind of the landscape space, the suggestion of, of uh, plowed fields, and then you start to realize that those plowed fields could also maybe be some sort of stadium seating. None of that appears to you at first, but then the more you look at it, the more you see. And this painting, by the way, is about the Chernobyl disaster um, in the Soviet Union, where a, um, a nuclear power plant had a terrible accident that um, hurt a number of people and made a hard, large portion um, of uh, the Soviet Union uninhabitable. I think it was in Georgia. Do you remember? Anyway, um, so 
anyway, and those of you who might have seen the TV series Chernobyl might remember that. So I'm sitting there one day, I've gone to the museum to look at artwork and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this painting, I'm just watching it, um, just sitting on the bench, kind of like that. That's not me, but pretty much just like that guy there, sitting on the bench with a sketchbook in hand, sketching the painting, looking at the painting. When all of a sudden I hear a group of a family group in the room next door to the to my left. Um, they're in the room where the Chuck Close is and the, uh, James Terrell, um, and uh, and they're making a lot of noise. And but I'm sitting there, and I can hear like the kids. They seem to be having a lot of fun. And all of a sudden, I can tell that the kids have seen stuff in the next room over, the room to my right. They can see all the bright paintings in the German Expressionist room, where the Max Beckman paintings are. And so they're heading towards, and all of a sudden they start running. And I'm sitting there, and now imagine three kids, one oldest, maybe about 11, one a little bit younger, maybe about nine, the youngest, maybe about seven or six, three kids running right in front of me, right in front of this painting, going to the next room. But right when they get in front of this painting, all three of them kind of turn and look at it and they just slide to a stop. So that they stop right in front of the middle of this painting. And the three kids just look at it and they just kind of like their jaws drop and they're like, wow, wow. You know, you could just hear the gasps. And then they turn back to, to the adult in the family, to their dad, and they call out to him. He's still in the room with the Chuck Closes. And they say, you know, dad, dad, what is that? And he says, you know, um, and of course he used uh, more, more cuss words, but he said, damn right, what the hell is that? Uh, and then he walked on. And the point of this story is that there were four people, three people who appreciated the work of art and one who did not. The one person who did appreciate the art, or the one person who didn't appreciate the art, he had the most training. Only all of his training was learning to dismiss, learning to not like, not learning to not appreciate. The kids, they didn't really have any training, anything to help them prepare them for looking at this particular painting, but they didn't need any because the painting is just so big and so complex with so much complexity of surface as well as color but you might not notice the color immediately and it's just you know so much to look at um, and they were just overwhelmed with that right and they didn't need any training to to be able to appreciate that way so the the point I make about the story is that the main thing you need to appreciate art is an open mind a willingness to look and to to relook and to think you know not close down and say I don't know what that is, that's stupid. Instead, look at something and say, what am I seeing here? And, and why, um, why do other people think this is an important work of art to look at? So we're getting close to the end of the, the first part of this lecture. I'll, I'll do this in two parts. But I wanted to get back to that question of how do art appreciation classes teach art appreciation? Because if basically to appreciate art, all you need is an open mind, what's my job, right? And my point is that I can encourage you to be open-minded, but I can also teach you a lot, like I did here when I told this story, I can teach you a lot about some of the background of the work of art, some of the structure of it. And ooh, we're getting very close to the end. So I'm going to wrap it up here, and then in the next one, I'll cover